Uh, hello, I'm Jonathan Kelber, and I'm an associate professor at Cal State Northridge in the Los Angeles area. I'm currently on my sabbatical leave from there as a Fulbright Cancer Research UK scholar at the University of Manchester. And today, my grad student Francesca and I will be telling you a little bit about our work on our recent uh, publication in Oncotarget titled Secretomes from Metastatic Breast Cancer Cells Enriched for a Prognostically Unfavorable LCN2 to access, induce anti-inflammatory MSC actions, and a tumor-supportive pre-metastatic lung. Generally speaking, my lab is interested in cancer metastasis and how to overcome that, as well as how to overcome therapy resistance in both breast and pancreatic cancers. Hello, my name is Francesca Sanchez, and I am a master's student in the public laboratory at California State University, Northridge. Um, upon the completion of my master's program, my hope is to matriculate into a doctoral program where I can continue studying so the project that we've recently published in Oncotarget had its uh, beginnings back in 2016, actually at the AACR annual conference that was held in New Orleans that year. And it was at the last day in a session entitled Pre-Metastatic Niches, Exosomes, and Tumor Secreted Factors that it occurred to me that most of the work that has been reported in this field has been done or has come to our understanding through the use of immune deficient animal models. And while that has been for good reason, since there's been a number of human tumor cells that have been developed and very well characterized that have specific organotropisms, it also seemed that there was a need for understanding how the pre-metastatic niche is reprogrammed or primed before tumor cell seeding in the context of models where the immune system is intact. And so as I returned from this meeting and began talking with my uh, current grad student or at the time, Miss Kayla Mead, uh, another first author on the paper. We began trying to devise some plans for how to approach this issue. And we also discovered that a complication in some of the studies in terms of what we were hoping to do was that there uh, are tumor cells being implanted into these models. Now, that might sound a little peculiar since we're actually trying to study cancer and we do need to know how these tumor cells are behaving in these models. But what we were interested in is understanding how the secreted factors specifically from these tumor cells act to reprogram or prime these free metastatic niches. And so having tumor cells implanted or injected into these models, even potentially immune competent models, pose a complicating factor. And so we wanted to really hone in on the secretomes. And so Kayla began by taking conditioned media from a cells, two cell lines, a PY2 and PY8119, a metastatic and a non-metastatic line that were developed by uh, Leslie Ellies out of the MMTV polymiddle T mouse and injecting those to systemically educate these mice. These were C57 black 6 mice. And then to characterize how the lung and brain tissues were changing histologically as well as looking at some immune and mesenchymal stem cell markers. And of course she was interested in how these cells were reprogramming these tissues in comparison to mock conditioned media as a control. And along with an undergraduate in the lab who's now moved on to a doctoral program at UC San Diego, Annalena Guayo, she's also a first author on the paper, they in parallel characterized how these conditioned media samples were affecting either immune cells or mesenchymal stem cells in vitro systems. And finally, when Francesca came on board last year, she really rounded out the story by uh, developing a method whereby she took out the educated lung tissue from these mice that had received these conditioned media treatments and dissociated the tissue, reconditioned fresh media, and then evaluated how that uh, tissue that had been primed and then subsequently conditioned media would affect tumor cell proliferation or survival ex vivo. And uh, so I'll let you tell, I'll let Francesca tell you a little bit now about what she found interesting in the work? Well, 
One of the most uh, tedious aspects of this work was actually establishing a reproducible enzymatic disassociation protocol that would allow and ensure us similar biomass in media that was conditioned from our mouse lungs. This was absolutely worth well, the time and the effort since it ended up enabling us to demonstrate that our systemic education of uh, protocol using conditioned media from our metastatic PUI-230 cells does in fact uh, create a more tumor-promoting environment within the lung tissues of these mice. One of the, I think, surprising things that we found in the course of the work was as Kayla was profiling the 18 different factors that had been previously reported to be upregulated in the PY230 versus the PY8119 lines. Again, these are soluble factors specifically. Uh, only one of them correlated with any prognostic significance, and that was lipocalin 2 or LCN2. And that was surprising, number one, because some of these other 17 factors have been previously reported to play pro-tumorigenic roles in breast cancer. And number two, it was interesting in that LCN2 has been previously reported to have what seems to be very context-dependent roles in tumor progression, specifically in breast cancer progression. And so uh, certainly an interest in the lab going forward will be to really understand what is that context dependency that allows LCN2 to promote breast cancer uh, progression and metastasis possible possibly other pro-tumorigenic functions of that growth factor. So I guess coming from there, my group, especially in the Kelber Lab, we're incredibly excited to see where this research is going to take us. So currently our work has three different points or threefold. So first we are going to interrogate, we are interrogating the function of LCN2 in our both in vitro and in vivo ex vivo models using both RNAi and neutralizing methods. Second, we are profiling up stream regulators of LCN2 expression and secretion in breast cancer cells, both mouse and human. And finally, we are characterizing LCN2 dependent molecular and cellular changes within both the pre-metastatic lung and brain using uh, RNA-seq methods as well as CISIF methods. And I think our long-term goal in this work is really to establish treatment regimens whereby these pre-metastatic or metastatic niches are rendered unfavorable to uh, host tumor cells, either where they become toxic and kill the tumor cells, or they just allow other anti-cancer therapies to come in and actually have an anti-cancer effect on those tumor cells, ultimately improving patient outcomes. So we'd like to thank OncoTarget very much for the opportunity to publish our work there and opportunity to share this uh, highlight with you here. Bye. Bye. Thank you.